It is Entering the Banyan Forest by Yvette Shapiro. Score 89 and 90 with an average of 89.5. Okay. I personally thought this is a, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's a beautiful composition. Um, I don't think the picture could have been done much better. Maybe from what I see on my screen, uh, perhaps there's a little bit too much difference between the light on the bottom and the light at the top. It's a little dark. Maybe I would have brought those leaves at the top uh, with a little more light so they would balance the picture a little more. Um, but the composition is very nice. The diagonal lines are nice. It's, it's perfect for the theme. And I think it had a, an excellent score. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Are we supposed to comment, Jeanette, or is it one of, one of us going to comment on each one? Both of you can, can comment. We have 40 pictures, so, uh, but still, I mean, it's not like we have to get out of our room right. at any time. But both of you could comment. Try to keep it a little bit brief. So. I'll, keep it, I'll keep it brief. Um, obviously, Boris and I agreed we weren't together when we judged these, but we're only one point apart on this picture. So obviously we must have felt similarly about it. Let me just say before we start, in a way this was kind of a tough competition because the subject matter is really beautiful. It's all over the place in South Florida. And, um, you know, it made it a little bit, in a way it made it a little bit tougher. I mean, it was, it was a pleasure to judge, by the way. It's always a pleasure to judge. In any event, um, I thought the composition was also very good. I, don't, I didn't have a problem with the light or dark particularly. Uh, you know, you could talk about, you know, I talk about cropping all the time. And, you could you could play with the cropping a little bit, but all in all, I think it was good, and that's why I gave it oh, a score, high score like that. Oh, maybe not just the camera. Yeah. Oh, where's the camera? Camera is all over. <laughs> okay, uh, deep in the Everglades received uh, scores of 86 and 82 for an average of 84 by Samuel Shapiro. Do uh, you want me to go first on this one? Yes. Yeah, go, go ahead. Okay. It's a very nice shot. Um, the only problem I have with this shot, I pulled down a little bit, is um, it felt a little static to me. If you take a look at the picture, I mean, it's a pretty picture. I would have Technically, I would have done a few things a little differently. I would have maybe darkened the sky a little bit, that the top area of the picture a little bit, just to kind of punch it up. Um, uh, it's a good shot. There's no question about it. I can't, I can't uh, fault it for that. But I felt that it was a little bit static. I'm looking at it now. And uh, if you want to, you know, I do this when we do our live, in-person judging. But to me... It would have been a better shot if you took about 25% off off of the right hand side. Like I said, the photo is, is, is a bit static for that reason. But if you just take your hand or, or a piece of paper and cover the screen, maybe 25% off the 20% maybe off of the right hand side. Personally, to my way of thinking, it would be a little better shot. Nonetheless, I, I gave it a pretty decent score. And I, I had a little bit of a problem with the focus, and I, I imagine that that's not the uh, photographer's fault. It's more like right now, for example, as I'm seeing it, the birds are quite pixelated. So it looks like a very low resolution photograph the way I'm looking at it. Um, when I judged it, it, it didn't have the pixelation, but it didn't have the, the sharp focus either. It's a nice, it's a nice image. It's, um, I guess it it, 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 it got a score of, of very good and, uh, and it's good. It's not excellent. It's, it's good. And um, I agree with you that the top part should be a little, maybe a little darker. Once again, to balance the, uh, 
the, the bottom part is much nicer. The, uh, the blue is very intense. And yet on top, which is the, the actual sky, is, is very, very light. So maybe balancing the blues and the darkening the trees a little bit might have made a, a more dynamic um, image. German lace received scores of 93 and 80, an average of 86.5 for Jerry Tiziani. Okay, well, since I'm the one that scored it high, I, I want to try to speak first. I, I think this is very artistic. I, I found this to be a wonderful uh, image. The um, the compass, the the inclusion of the symmetric lines of the structure of the building with the beauty of the flowers in front, um, the way they were placed. I, 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 I think this, to me, was one of the top five images of the group. Uh, I liked it very much. I, I'd like to know why your scoring was that so low, uh, Andy. I'll be glad to explain my philosophy. As a shot, I love the shot very much. The reason that I pulled the score down was, and maybe that's not fair, but I, I, I have to call it as I see it. Um, based on the theme of the competition, I felt that this kind of did not address the theme very well, as well as some of the other shots, for example. Uh, to me, uh, it didn't, I think it was flowers and trees, something like that's what it's supposed to be. And it, yes, it does have trees and, and I guess you call those, fl those are flowers on the trees, but you know, somehow the architecture part of it uh, in the background is very, makes it, it's a beautiful shot, don't get me wrong. I just felt that it didn't address the, uh, the title of the competition as well as the others, and that's the reason I pulled it down. Yeah. Okay, can I make a comment? Of course. In, um, on the website, when you looked at the, we always make a description of the, uh, of the theme. And in this case, what was included in the description was that the tree and or flower had to be prominent in the picture, but it did not have to be the central thing. That was in the, in the description, okay. which I thought Walter would have sent to you all. I, I agree with the concept of prominence but I don't think that saying that it doesn't have to be the main subject is a good, is a good way of describing the category because then uh, anything goes. You have a, a picture of a, of a landscape and there's a tree way in the back, so there's a tree. Well, I said it, the tree or flower had to be prominent, not prominent, way in the but background. But then, then you followed up and said it didn't have to be the main subject. Main focus, yeah. Main focus. Yeah, you could have a person by a tree and you might think of the person as well if it's more I mean, prominent if the person is more prominent fine but if, in this case i think that the flowers are more prominent than the building mm -hmm. that's how i okay see it. yeah okay okay pine trees at the everglades uh, received a score of 88 and 87 with an average of 87.5 for Maria Pilar Giada. Um, I guess I, I go first. Uh, actually, um, I really like this shot. Um, and obviously, Boris and I felt, again, pretty close together on the score on this particular one, unlike the last one. It's a beautiful shot. Um, and I always, you know, I've always been told make a suggestion as to what could be done to improve it. And I've looked and I've looked and I've looked. And the only thing I can think of that I would possibly, and what I would do is work for, for my shot, based on, I'm looking at it now on a, on a calibrated monitor here, I would probably slightly play with the uh, intensity of the colors in the sky. And I would possibly, possibly darken it in the sky just a little bit. I'd have to try it and see how it looked. But that's what I would do where my shot is. It's a beautiful shot. The colors are, are gorgeous. We've had a 
some really nice sunsets around here in the last, I don't know, few months. And this is certainly indicative of that. And so I do compliment the photographer on, uh, on their eye and, and compositionally it works very well. I wouldn't do any cropping. I might play with the, like I said, the exposure and do a little bit, little bit of burning here and there on that possible. Um, I, I really don't have much to add. I, I, I also very much like the, uh, the whole image. Um, it's, like a, it's like a beautiful flag. It, it has three sections, the, the, the foreground being a little lighter than the middle ground. And then I like the sky the way it is. I, I, I wouldn't touch it. It's so unbelievably beautiful, the, the blending of the colors from blue to pink to more pink to purple to orange. It's just, just wonderful. It's a beautiful afternoon. Nice image. Wet Beauty received a score of 92 and 90 with an average of 91 for Rolando Pro. Okay, this was one of the nicest images, undoubtedly. Um, possibly a little tight. Um, in, my, in my taste, I thought if it would have a little bit more space, might have been more pleasant. It, it, it's a little bit too, too the, the subject seems to be a little too big. I also find, found, the, I don't know if this was found like this in nature or the, if the, uh, the droplets were, were sprayed on it, but a little excessive on the, on the drops to my taste. But the exposure is, is wonderful. The, uh, the composition is wonderful. The, the colors are beautiful. The, the pink of the flower is very nicely, uh, it, it's not over, it's not under, it's, it's just right on, a reflection. Just, the whole picture is very beautiful. Yeah, the droplets don't particularly bother me, and, and I agree with Boris. Certainly, the exposure is very nice. Um, it, it's not always so easy to get an exposure like that and have the reflection also come out as nicely as it did here without the reflection, for example, being too dark. The only thing I probably would have done, again, if, if this was my image and I would have had to play with it, uh, if you take a look at the reflection in the bottom right-hand corner, to me, that's a little bit distracting. Uh, if you cover that up, it, you either make it completely black or, or perhaps even better yet, tone that down. It's easy enough to do in uh, Photoshop or in uh, you know, Photo ele Elements or, or Lightroom for that matter. Just to, just to tone that down just a little bit. I would have played with it anyway to see how it would look to do that. I mean, the image is great. Compositionally, it works pretty well. Um, it, it's sharp. You can't fault it for that. The color is beautiful. I'm looking at it on a 27-inch monitor right now, and it looks, it looks terrific. But, um, again, Boris and I, I think, scored this one within two points of each other, so that was pretty good. Serenity in the Everglades received a score of 89 and 87, average 88 for Ibis Millenkamp. Well, I guess, do I, you know, Boris, you go next, right? No, I go next. Yeah. Um, beautiful shot, Ibis. Um, I scored it rather high. Um, it's a gorgeous picture. I, I don't think I could give you any. Uh, suggestions as to what I would do differently on this. I like to play with the saturation sometimes when I'm looking at these photos and I'm working on them. Um, I might have played with it a little bit, but I'm not sure that it would have helped this picture any. I think the picture is beautiful. And you have a very good eye and I compliment you. For it. Sorry about that. I'll turn that off. I also I also found it to be very beautiful. The reflections are beautiful. The exposure is nice. Uh, some of the leaves are a little hot, but uh, I guess you can't avoid it. Um, there isn't that much, much I would do to improve it. It's it's really a a very nice image.
Fall Leaves, score 85-82, average 83.5 for Jim Farrington. I think this particular photograph has wonderful color. The, I mean, it's hard to think of two colors that contrast as beautiful as this strong orange and the strong blue. Yet, I think the subject is distracted too much by the busy background, in spite of the fact that the background is out of focus, which is nice. But I, I still find it, it could, you know, it, I, I could accept it as it is, as, as a little painting, it would, it would look beautiful in any, in any wall. Um, it's artistic. Um, but if I had to criticize something, I would say maybe, maybe a little too busy uh, in general. Um, other than that, I don't know, what, what, what do you think? Uh, yeah. yeah, Boris, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I like this image as well. The color, the color is wonderful. I think that, um, and, and the, the out of focus helps. It's not on the left hand side of the image. It's, it gets a little bit confused there. Uh, perhaps um, when this shot was uh, was processed on the computer, perhaps uh, somebody uh, the maker could have perhaps maybe done looking over here to get a little bit of a little bit of burning on the left hand side. Of, the part that's out of focus, just to kind of make the, the leaves pop a little more on the left-hand side. I mean, that's just a minor suggestion. But I think overall, it's very good. And, you know, I gave it a pretty decent score. Spring Succulent. Scores 87 and 80, average 83.5 for Roger Wyman. Um, this shot, I pulled it down a little bit. And I'll tell you why. That the out of focus part of it really was uh, distracting to me. And you know, we've seen we see many, many flower pictures like this, but for some reason, uh, it just the out of focus part was more <coughs> prominent in this photo, I would say, than the part that was in focus. It was also lighter. And because it's lighter, your eye tends to go to the lighter areas of a photograph. And uh, so I think, I think in that sense, it <coughs> pulled it down a little bit to my way of thinking. And that's the reason I, I scored it a little bit lower. I had a <clears throat> an interesting, when I viewed this photograph, I was playing around with uh, the uh, images as they were sent to me, and I, 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 uh, I got to see it in two different ways. For some reason, one of the two was a little more cropped, and the other one was more open. I think this is like the more open view. The other one was cropped for some reason, maybe on my computer, maybe uh, that's the, way, the way it was showing. But I liked it better when it was more cropped because it had less of this light that, that Sandy's talking about. On, on, it was less, less strong of an effect pulling the eye. Um, I, I, I thought it was a beautiful, very artistic. It, it definitely can be, it can be worked to be a better image than it is, but I think it has potential to be an excellent image. Um, like, like Sandy said, maybe lightening a little bit on, on, on the center darkening a little bit on the on the sides the out of focus is is nice because even though it's lighter the eye stays on the focus because i think the focus is more important than the light and the only thing i i would do and, and i do this on my own photos every day is I, I find there's a lot of white dots and some of the dots i guess are actual things on the flower that are reflecting um, sometimes there is problems of the of, of the of the sensor, um, but I get rid of. Uh, for example, uh, to be specific, or there is a dot in in the, below the center, on the, a little bit to the right. I would get rid of that. Just you know, there's a there's a little tool on Photoshop. You just touch it and it goes away in a second. Another one, a little 
to the left of that one, little bottom. Then there's some on the right hand side that are too bright. They're too, they look out of focus and, and, and they, they, they bother me. Um, even, even something like the one on, on the top, on top of the center, top left of the center, there's an out of focus burst. I, like, I would get rid of it. I, I don't think these, these uh, white spots add to the photograph. They, you can clean it up a little bit. Not 100%, but some. In general, I think it's a, it's a very interesting uh, rendition of this plant, flower. Hmm. Alone in the Keys. Scores of 90 and 90 with an average of 90 for David Wicks. Okay. Uh, well, we seem to have agreed right on the money on this one, which is, which is nice to see. Uh, it's a gorgeous uh, uh, photograph. The sky is wonderful. The foreground is very nice and well in focus. The placement of the tree is very good. Uh, it's almost silhouetted, which is which is nice. Uh, it could have been lightened and it might have created a different effect, but I like it as a almost silhouette. Um, the horizon is very very nice and even, not slanted, uh, which is one of my pet peeves. Um, there is a nice storm on the right, uh, going under the cloud there, which is which adds interest to the photograph. Yeah. Um, beautiful image. I uh, I have not I don't have too much to add. I, I agree. Uh, this one grabbed me. You know, when you're looking at these images every now and then, one or two of them really jump out at you, and this was one of those. Um, I might have, I might have played with one thing, and I'm not sure that it even would have helped. And I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at it right now. Maybe 10% off of the right, cropping it. Um, I think it would have been compositionally just a trifle better if, if that was done. But I'm not sure even. I, I don't know until I play with it and try it and see how it looks. It's beautiful the way it is, and you know we both scored it rather high for the same for the same reasons. Okay, green and purple flower 72. Uh, scores of 79 and 86, an average of 82.5 for Dustin Piel Athanasiadis. Um, well, we do have a discrepancy on this one. And I, I know I, I spent a little time studying this, one, trying to figure out where I wanted to score it. Um, there's, it's a, it's a beautiful shot. The colors are certainly Magnificent, you can't fault it for that. Uh, what, I, what was bothering me a little bit was the parts that were out of focus. Um, I felt they were maybe a little bit too much out of focus. On the one hand, on the other hand, I looked at it again, I said, you know what, maybe that's part of the beauty of the picture. And let's face it, when it comes to looking at photographs or artwork, you know, it's like the condominium association. You got 12 guys and 13 opinions. You know, it's like everybody's got an opinion. Um, but anyway, uh, what did I score this one at? Let me see. Um, I scored at 86, and I, I actually scratched out a couple of scores. I went back and forth on this one, I remember. But, um, but I like the shot. Uh, you know, the impression was good. You look at the picture, it's attractive. I wouldn't mind having a, you know, a print of that hanging on my wall. It, it's, it's very pretty. I, I, uh, the background is, is very nice. The, the image, I think, has, like you said, too many parts out of focus. I think I, I, I would I would have liked to have been the person taking this photograph and playing with aperture. And uh, let's say if this was taken at f4, uh, moving it to 5.6, moving it to 8, moving it to 11, moving it to 16, and get five images of the same composition. And then looking at all five, six, eight, ten images and, and and seeing which one had more, more impact. I think it, it's too soft for my taste. Um, there are beautiful prints in, in art shows that are out of focus and 
I guess uh, it's a different school. Um, the one thing that bothers me in the composition is the, the, the purple flower on the bottom coming in kind of, it's kind of intrusive. It, 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 it subtracts from the symmetry of the two purple uh, buzz on the sides. It, it, yeah, exactly that. Who made that? You did that, um, Walter? Yes, I did it. Okay, good. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I think if that would go, you cover it with your, with your hand, it gives the, the, the balance, it, it, the, the picture is more balanced. That's, that's about it. Sundance Flower scores 91 and 90, average 90.5 for John McKnight. My turn. I think you go, Walter. Okay. I mean, uh, it, the exposure on this on this flower is exceptional. Exceptional. The, the center, a bit dark, but not uh, nothing to criticize. The the, the, uh, the petals are beautifully exposed. The back, the green background, the symmetry. Uh, I mean. I don't think it can be done better. It cannot be done better. It's a beautiful photograph. I, 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 I agree. I agree with you. Um, again, this is one of those shots that when it came up on the screen, I said, wow, that's kind of blew me away. I think we both were. It very you know, highly and, and very close. People aren't going to think they're going to think we consulted on this, and they certainly did not. Um, and I wouldn't make any changes. I'm looking at it now, and I can't think of anything. I wouldn't change the cropping. I wouldn't change the exposure. I wouldn't do any burning or dodging. Um, I, I love the way the uh, photographer used depth of field in this shot. It, it worked very effectively. The contrasting colors work very well. And um, what can I say? It's a beautiful picture. Irises received a score of 92 and 95, average 93.5 for Barbara Thompson. Um, I love this. I love this photo. Um, the colors certainly work extremely well together. Uh, the composition is excellent on this photo. Again, this is a picture that I probably wouldn't make many changes if I were. If I had this photo in front of me in my computer, perhaps, perhaps I would play very slightly with maybe burning a little bit in the upper left-hand corner, burning a little bit, maybe a little more in the lower right-hand corner, maybe even in the upper right. I play with it a little bit to see, uh, but I mean the flowers, you know, the iris flowers pop so beautifully. I mean they're they're gorgeous. They almost look like artificial flowers, uh, just gorgeous. And uh, you know, I scored it, I scored it accordingly. I, I I agree with you. I, I think I'm, I'm personally looking at my list. I, I have a looks like a 92, but I see that I made a little tail on the bottom. I guess when I copied it to to the uh, Excel, I copied it as a 92. I, I it was meant to be a 93, but that I don't know. Maybe that's something that shouldn't even come up now. But I also I I find this probably of of all 40 images. This is definitely in the top three in composition. It's, it's a wonderful composition. The diagonal lines of the leaves, framing that V, framing the two flowers, the placement of the two flowers, uh, just, and the contrast of the two colors once again. Wonderful image. It cannot be done better. Rustic Rest Stop scores 93 and 98, an average of 95.5 for Ivan Preysen. You, you go, Boris. Okay. Absolutely beautiful image. I mean, the, it, it fits the subject 100%. 
It has a very, very well done vignetting, which adds enormously, not too many photographs benefit as much as, as, this, as this one has from the vignetting. Um, the, uh, the eye is pulled by the light at the end of the road, and, uh, and it's a nice diagonal. It, it takes you all the way from the bench to the end of the road. The, the, the color is beautiful. The, the presentation is wonderful with the greens, the green frames around. Um, wonderful, absolutely wonderful image. Yeah, this one, uh, actually, this one, I believe, you see my highest score of all of them. Um, as a commercial and advertising photographer, this, this shot has commercial value, actually, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it, this could be used for any number of advertising purposes, for example. But it's beautifully executed as an artistic photo. It's, um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I can see this as an illustration in an editorial for any one of a number of things. Um, it could be an ad for anything from a, from a, a drug company to, uh, to uh, I don't know, any, anything. There, there's just a number of things that you could use this photo for. Uh, it, on top of which, it's beautifully executed. Um, you know, it's, like I said, it hit me. This one hit me probably the hardest of all of them. I believe I, I, believe I gave this the highest score of everybody. So I congratulate photographer on, on that. The presentation is also beautiful. Fuzzies. Scores 85 and 80, average 82.5 for Fred Kong. Um, this one, for some reason, it didn't hit me the way some of the other ones did. Um, and that's why I pulled it down a little bit. It didn't seem to, didn't seem to have any real point of focus on it. In other words, my eye went all over the place. Maybe that's the point of the picture. Um, it, needed, it needs a little more punch in it. It needs a little more contrast, a little more saturation, maybe. Um, and uh, but compositionally, it didn't really grab me like some of the other shots did. And that's the reason why I pulled it down a little bit. Um, I don't know. Uh, I hear what, what Boris has to say about it. I, I, I agree with everything you said. It's, uh, it, lacks, it lacks impact, and that's why it was scored down a little bit. It's well executed. It's well exposed. Um, but it, it's to the, no, 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 no center to, to the viewer. It, it just, like you said, your mind wanders around and doesn't find any point of interest. Okay. Exactly. Flower brunch. Scores 84 and 88, average 86 for Daniel Holmes. Okay, this particular picture made me feel, and, and I think that if, if I really would have gone more with it, it's only because it's so well exposed and everything that I scored it a little higher, but I would have gone the way you went with the, the, the building and, the, and the, the white flowers at the beginning of the presentation, the, the, the one that you felt that the, there was too much competition between the, and that the tree was not, uh, not prominent enough, which I didn't agree with. But in this one, to me, this is a picture of a bird. This yeah. is a picture of the bird. The flowers are, I find them quite uninteresting. They're there. But if you look at the picture and you keep looking at it, you will not look at the flowers. You'll look at the eye of the bird and you look at the feathers of the bird. That's what's really in focus. Wonderful focus, by the way. But the flowers are, are somewhat uninteresting. The background is wonderful. But maybe this this photo in, in a... Uh, in a photo, in a contest of birds or something, might have done better. I think it got. I personally scored it down a, a little bit because it just didn't meet the theme the way others of the forty did. Uh, I understand exactly what you're saying. I did score a little higher. I think. I think the reason I scored it higher, as I'm looking at it now, is uh, the, the coloration of the bird and the coloration of the flowers kind of work well together. 
and it made it, you know, an interesting shot. But you're, you're right, the, the bird really uh, is what comes to mind, I think, before flowers. And as you said, if this was a, this was a competition about birds, uh, it would be another story. But for some reason, uh, it didn't hit me quite the way the other one did that we talked about. And uh, I think it was because of the coloration. Uh, you look at the bird, look at the flowers, and the, they're very similar in, in the red color and so forth. And uh, so I guess I was attracted to it from that standpoint. But uh, as I, as you mentioned that, I think I have to agree with you, Boris, uh, on your assessment. Florida fall color scores 85 and 87, average of 86 for James Key. Okay. Um, Nice shot. Um, I felt um, compositionally, personally, to me, it was lacking a little bit. Um, you know, I'm real big on cropping and, and composition. And, you know, I'm going to just hold up a piece of paper here for a second over my screen. And um, I think the right hand, if, if the maker had made this into a square photo, for example, and cropped out part of the right until it became a square, to me, it would have been, you know, it would have been compositionally a better picture. Uh, you could quibble a little bit about the, about the coloration. You know, I, I would probably, I like to pop the colors a little bit, so I probably would have done that myself. But I think it was mostly the composition that bothered me a little bit about this shot. The first thing that came to my mind when I saw this picture is I would have been standing where this picture was taken from, I would have moved my lens to the right. I would have put the, the tree on a more impactful uh, position, like uh, two thirds or one third from the left, get, um, get rid of that white uh, sandy, whatever that is, which also catches the eye too much, distracts too much. I would have gotten rid of part of that and then one's got like if you if you put your hand up on on the left side and just just put your hand straight and crop leave the tree close to the left edge and then if you had a little more space to the right that's how i would have done this picture then i would have darkened the the, the white whatever's left of the white floor there to subtract importance to it and it and, and then it, it becomes a wonderful image it's, it's beautiful the reflection is beautiful the colors play very nicely. I think that's the only problem with this photograph is, is the, the position of the tree and the, the hot light there, section there, the flat beach. In the Swamp scores 92 and 88, average of 90 for Ina Malastoka. I, this is to me one of the nicest of the 40 images. Definitely one of the nicest. Now that I see it, I like it even more than yesterday. I, I give this a, what, a 92, which is close to my top score. Um, I think that even without the flowers, even without the flowers, this would be a beautiful, uh, ethereal, I mean, just, just a mysterious, beautiful image. With the flowers, plus, plus, plus. I mean, the, the, it just gave it a, 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 an artistic touch, and uh, I, I love this image. I think this is, this is definitely a, a winning image. Okay, um, I agree, Boris. It's a beautiful shot. The only reason I pulled, and I, I love the picture, the only reason I pulled it down, again, talking about cropping, I would, I, I would have cropped it a little differently. I think it would be an even stronger image in my, in my view. Again, if you want to hold your hand up and take away some of those trees that are on the left-hand side and just have a little bit of water there and then the tree with the flowers, it'd even be more powerful. But it's beautifully done. It's beautifully exposed. I love the ripples in the water, the way the photographer caught that. And that was the only reason I pulled that one down. It is, it is a gorgeous shot, though. 
I agree. I, I agree with you, Sandy. That 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 bushy, yeah. the, busy, the busy tree on the left. Uh, no, further, further left. Yeah, you go a little further left, and maybe I don't know. Can you make that? Leave that one. The, the one tree that's that's there. Leave it. It's only take out the one that's at the very edge of the photograph. That's where I, the way I would have cropped it. Yeah. Leaving leaving the. The, the first, the, the first tree that's to the left of the of the yellow flowers, I would have left it because that's a beautiful reflection. Well, I don't know, maybe, or you could take them both out, but leave as much water as possible. Anyway, I, I, I like it. Agree, it's a nice, it's a nice image. It's a beautiful image. Yeah, even further left. Yeah. Okay. Nonconformist scores 91 and 88 with an average of 89.5 for Brian Huntsman. Do I go on this one? I forgot already. Um, that, who goes? Who goes first on this one? Um, I think you. I think. I think you might be right. <laughs> uh, another beautiful shot. Um, wonderful use of color. Uh, use of depth of field, I would have personally, I think I would have got rid of those little yellow petals that are on the left-hand side there. It's an easy fix to get rid of that. That's a little bit of a distraction. I would have scored a little higher if it was without that, but certainly it's um, a beautiful shot. And uh, it's like some of these other ones where the, the yeah, that right there, you, get, you know, it's such an easy job to remove that. Many of the photo editing uh, programs that we use. So I really liked it. Um, can I tell you, I, I scored it accordingly, and that's about my only comment as far as what I would do differently. I wouldn't change anything else. The only thing I would add, following your your train of thought, like getting rid of those three yellow flower uh, petals, whatever they are on the left, I would have gotten rid of rid of the two leaves on the right as well. So, Possibly, yeah, because right now there's there's a balance between those those three items on, on the left and, and the ones on the right, but I, I don't really care for the balance. I, I would rather get rid of all five, get rid yeah. of all five and leave, yeah. the, leave the flower to its beauty by itself without any competition. Um, the color is exceptional. Um, the center it plays nicely dark. Somehow it makes it be artistic, but I would have tried making the yellow center slightly lighter maybe slightly lighter to give it a little more punch uh, um, the, the rest of the you know the leaves the bottom part is very bright the, the orange is very bright and the center of the flower which is the center of the photograph is a little bit under a little, a little bit under lit uh, I think it could have used a little more a little more light but in general that 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 leaf on the, the leaf on the bottom that it's like a pedestal for the flower. The whole, the whole thing is beautiful. Beautiful photograph. New Mexico pecan trees in fog. Scores 92 and 95. Average 93.5 for Robert Carapel. My turn. This is also one of one of the most beautiful images of, of the contest. It's just it's breathtaking. Um, it's, I can't think of anything that I would change on it. Anything. I mean, it's just just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful image. Um, the tone. I mean, I don't know what to say. It just, just can't, it can't be any nicer. It's beautiful composition. What do you, Sandy? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. I, I have nothing to add. It was, you know, you look at this picture; it's breathtaking. Uh, my compliments to the photographer on this. Um, compositionally, it's good. There, every, you, you can't find fault with this picture. I couldn't. I wouldn't crop it any differently. Um, I also scored this very high end near. Certainly near the, the top of all of the images that I scored on this competition. So uh, again, I love the image, and I want to congratulate the.
fiber problems for me. My Crooked Ways scores 86 and 86 for an average of 86 for Ruth Casal. Uh, this is a nice shot. Uh, the, the problem, the only problem I have with this is that this particular tree has been photographed hundreds of times. And I've seen, I must have seen at least a dozen different shots over the years of this tree. And uh, there's a lot of ways that it can be done. Uh, I've never been there myself, but I know it's got to be only one tree like this. And um, it's nice. I think I think the cropping could have been possibly a little bit improved. I would have definitely worked on the sky a little bit on this one. I might have played with the angle. For example, if the photographer got down a little bit lower, uh, if you can picture what would happen, the trunk of the tree where that Z shape is would move higher into the horizon more. It would have been nice to get that, in my opinion, maybe use a slightly wider lens, get down a little bit lower, and have more sky, you know, have the tree against the sky a little more. I think it would have been a little more impactful that way. That's my only uh, comment. I'm, I'm not there, I've never been there, but um, that's, that's, I think that's what I would have done. Well, I had never seen this tree before, but there's a couple of, a couple of things that I, that I that didn't allow me to give it a higher score. Number one, the tree on the right is completely distracting, obtrusive, and if, if the, the maker would have moved a little bit to the right and tried to use the sky further left, avoiding that tree, which crashes against the, that branch, one. Two, the branches of the tree itself on both sides are cropped. They're cut and by, by not much. And I think that moving back a little bit and including the old tree, uh, getting rid of that other tree there would have helped. Another item I didn't like is that twig on the left bottom, which is even, even by reducing the, the light of it, right, you can easily, there, there's a tool that you can run it over like like, like a wheel right, right over the over the, the lines of the of the twig and it'll dis they disappear and, and it, it blends them like it was never there. So easy to do and it would it would it would improve the image. So it's three four things that twig, the the, the, the branches on the top left and right being cut and the, that avoiding that tree. Everything else is is is, is fine. With exposure, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. For Gail, scores 83 and 92, average 87.5 for Stephen Hanshu. I don't, I don't know whose turn it is, but, but since you're scoring so much higher, I'll let you, let you go. Well, I think it's your turn. You want me to go first? Yeah, because I, I personally didn't, didn't think this image uh, did anything to, for me. It was, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, obviously you scored it very high, so I'd rather hear what you have to see. And what sure, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think I think the I, I like the image very much. I think it, it personified the um, essence of the assignment for one thing. Um, colors are beautiful. Uh, technically, it looks looks pretty good to me. Um, the exposure. Yeah. It, it might. I maybe it would have burned the out, outer petal just a trifle more to get it a little a little bit darker on the outside. But I like the use of color. I think compositionally it works. And, um, you know, I liked it. You know, as I said earlier, images have to hit you a certain way. And this happened to hit me. Uh, again, keeping the assignment, you know, in mind, as to what, what the assignment was about, I thought this pretty much personified. No, it's not the prettiest flower in the world, but it's a well done image of this particular flower. I think there are some beautiful 
sections to the photograph. I don't particularly care for the center. A little too busy, too many little lines, a little dark. But if you look at the left side of the photograph and the right side of the photograph, the top, those, those bright pinks mixed with the white and they're almost like transparent. That is beautiful. I, I just wish that center, <laughs> I mean, it's there, it's there, but I, I like the outside so much and I, I like the center so little that I couldn't score it any higher. Swampy Reflections, scores 90 and 89, average 89.5 for Samuel Shapiro. Okay, I, once again, a uh, high score. I, I would love to see this photograph in like a, maybe 30 by 40 or a little smaller behind a, a sofa in my living room or something. Beautiful. It's an artistic photograph. It's a beautiful reflection. Um, what would I do better? Maybe get rid of that white dot in the middle of the photograph, which kind of pulls my eye. Um, other than that, maybe slightly darker, slightly, if anything. But in general, it's 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 a it's a it's a little work of art. I, uh, I agree with Boris. I mean, we, I think we've scored it almost the same. Um, it's amazing how many of these images actually we did, we did score within a point of each other. Um, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, maybe a little darker, you know. Uh, it, it's a beautiful artistic image. This, could, this is a photo, like Boris said, you could hang on a wall in your living room or whatever. Uh, it's, it's, this is the kind of photo that would probably make a sale at an art show somewhere. Yep. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed the picture. Again, I compliment the photographer for, for his eye on this, his or her eye on this um, photograph. April in Paso. Scores 85 and 87, average 86 for Jerry Tiziani. Um, this is a really nice shot. I, I spent some time looking at this picture also, trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to score it. There's something, there's something a little bit lacking here, and I still haven't been able to put my finger on it exactly. Um, perhaps it's the, I'm looking at it again now, perhaps uh, by cropping some of those orange flowers out, maybe half of them or a little more in the bottom, would make it a, a stronger image as far as composition is concerned because the image itself is, is really pretty, but I think my eye is drawn to the bottom 25% uh, of the picture because of those orange flowers there, and it kind of tends to make my eye wander. I don't really have a point of focus, but I, as I'm looking at it now, by cropping a good chunk of that out, I think it's a better picture in my, in my view. Um, I looked at it. I said, "This score, this really deserves a higher score," but I couldn't quite, couldn't quite bring myself to give it, give it a higher score. And that, that's my thinking on it. My score followed the, the, the a train of thought like this. First thing, I agree with, with Sandy that the, the, there's too many flowers at the bottom, and if if he if he, I didn't see that yesterday, but now that you say it, if you crop that bottom it improves the image, number one. Number two, the white flowers are, from what it looks on my screen, and they look the same way yesterday, I think they're a little blown out, even, and it could have easily been burnt. The, the green, on the leaves on the white flowers are also a little light, so that whole white flower section would have been burnt, and it would have benefited, it would have uh, improved. Now, the the buildings on the background were somewhat distracting to me. Number one, they're slanted. The, the, the building, the, the line is not, the, 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 the horizontal lines are slanted, leaning to the left. I, 
I, that bothers me especially. I, I always notice those things, especially on something like this. The um, they, they are a little bit too bright also, the buildings, and, and that also catches the eye. It's a little distracting. So then another thing that I found it a multi-subject image. And there's a little too much going on, a little too much going on to, to receive a, 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 an excellent score. It's a good photograph. It's interesting. It, it's got a lot of elements, it's, but it's just not for a competition on this subject. I think that it could have been done better. And this picture itself can be improved to a, to a better, better photograph because it has all the elements. Uh, Edling Jera Blossom scores 92 and 86, an average of 89 for Rolando Pro. Um, this was one of my favorite photographs. What would I do? I mean, the composition is very interesting. It's dynamic. It's the, the, the contrast of colors is, is wonderful. What would I do with the image as is? I wouldn't touch it, except I would get rid once again of that white dot on the top, which is distracting. It's not a natural dot. It just, it's just too, too prominent. There are little dots in the center of the flower I might let go, but I, I personally would get rid of those as well. Um, I think that it's, it's a wonderful flower and uh, the background is, is, is very nice with the lines. Um, it's one of the nice conversations. I also, I remember thinking yesterday that I would, think, I would, I would uh, do a little bit of levels or curves or something on it and bring, bring up a little bit the, 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 uh, the light, especially on the flower itself, although it has some hot spots, but it, the center is a little dark, a little dull, and it, it, it lacks a little bit of life. Maybe it's acceptable as, as a work of art, maybe a painter would paint it like that. Uh, as a photograph, I, I think that maybe increasing the levels, the, the, the contrast on it would improve it. And, and definitely get rid, get rid of the white spots. I, they're, they're bothering more as I see them now. Okay, well, I, I have a couple other things to add to that. Uh, for some reason, uh, the, the, obviously this was done with electronic flash, and um, what bothered me was the reflection of the flash in the petals there. You can see it's, that's really prominent. That could have been toned down a little bit after the fact. Uh, that's one thing. It, everybody has their own personal things, I guess, and that bothers me just a little bit. Uh, the other thing is, I really feel a composition be improved if we just took off a little bit again on the right hand side, maybe not quite to a square, but almost to a square. Uh, I think I think it would have been personally to me better compositionally. So I, I pulled it down a little bit for those reasons. Bending to the Sun, scores 93 and 94, average 93.5 for Yvette Shapiro. Okay, I love the picture. I love it for a lot of reasons. Obviously, Morris and I agree. Uh, our score was within one point of each other on this. Um, the thing I like about it probably, besides the fact it's compositionally very good, the thing I like about the, the best is that the photographer chose to make this a monochrome. Um, I think the most people, probably myself included, would have not done that. Uh, you know, when you're talking about flowers with all kinds of color and everything, you would automatically, I would automatically think of, of color. I wouldn't think of a monochrome at all. But boy, does this work as a monochrome. Uh, you know, the because you don't think about color. You look, you look at, the, at the shape and the the petals and the composition and and the fact that the flower you're actually seeing the, the back side of the flower that's another thing you don't normally find in a competition about flowers usually is the front of the flower but um i, I love this picture and i i have no uh 
I, I have nothing to add as far as what could be done to improve it. Even the monochrome conversion was very good. Uh, sometimes when you do that, if you don't know what you're doing, you lose a lot. Uh, the photographer managed to keep the tonal values pretty good throughout, even in the whites. And most of the whites are not blown out. There's a couple of areas that are slightly blown out, but that's awfully tough to do. And uh, I congratulate them on uh, a great monochrome conversion. I, I agree with all you said. I I, uh, I find this to be probably the most artistic of the whole bunch. Um, you know, both composition and the choice of monochrome. Uh, what could I do better? Uh, maybe a little more space on the bottom. I don't know if if the uh, if the image is being cropped. I saw it yesterday as well, so I, I don't know if if that one petal is cut at the bottom. Uh, I would see if, if the original image has it, I would include it and include a little bit of space like it has on top. Um, other than that, the background is absolutely magnificent. It's, it frames the, the sharpness of the flower. The fact that the flower is taken from behind is also very interesting. It's got a lot of things going. I mean, the, the, the choice of the monochrome, as, as Tandy said, the choice of photographing the flower from the rear. It's just a great idea. I mean, it's, it's commendable. Congratulations. Red roses for sale. Scores 82 and 86, average of 84 for Maria Pilar Giada. Uh, I wasn't too impressed by this image. Um, I don't find that it has great impact. It doesn't have that good a focus except on her left hand, which is certainly not, uh, not, not important. So that, that maybe subtract points. There are some distracting elements on the center top and the center left, top left, um, up, up center and top left. Uh, those elements should be out of there. Um, I find the, the right arm and hand to be too, too hot. It, and it just it, it distracts the eye. And especially since the flowers in the center, which are the main subject, are not uh, sharp, I think the picture could have been done better. It, it's it's, it's an interesting moment of, of, of uh, flowers probably being collected or being sold or being put into some uh, container, but, but um, it, it has too many errors for a higher score. Well, uh, yeah, I, I tend to agree with, with those comments. I would like to add something else. Um, my eye didn't really know where to go in this picture. Um, a couple of the different elements that are in there, it becomes a little confusing. So compositionally, it could be improved. Now, I was just looking at it again now, and I don't know whether you guys are set up to do that or not, but if you were to crop just to the hands and the flowers in the hands, leaving a little bit of background around it, it would be a far stronger image, far stronger image. Now, obviously, focus is an issue, uh, the exposure on that, on the right hand back there, uh, where it's really hot, that needs to be brought down a little bit. I'm not sure if the focus is is sharp enough to improve with some software or not. It possibly could be, but just by cropping it alone, I would have, you know, I would would have helped me uh, score it higher. I'll tell you that right now. Another thing that this photograph has, which I don't like, is there's too much difference between the left side and the right side. It, the, the left side is, is too dark and the right side is too bright. Right. Uh, both right. of them being too dark for, for comfort and the other one too bright for comfort. So, so it needed to even out. If the photographer had burned in the bottom right and right in the middle on the bottom to kind of match the left side, it would have been a stronger image that way too. Uh, but, you know, just like I said, cropping would do it too. I just, it just, I don't have a, a point, my eye doesn't go to any one particular place like it should. I think that's the problem that, that bothered me.
Flowers for the Season. Scores 85 and 92, average 88.5 for Eva Hillenkamp. Is it my turn? Yeah, go ahead because you scored it so much higher that, that I'd like to see what, no. what you saw that I didn't see. Well, I obviously we have different ways of looking at it. I love this photo, actually. Um, uh, even though there's a man in the picture, and I know the, the, the photo was, you know, the assignment was really for flowers. I don't, I think the flowers are prominent enough that it's really not a problem. I only wish the photographer again had cropped this thing. If, they, if he had cropped it or she had cropped it on the right-hand side, enough to make it into a square, I'm doing that right now with my hands, uh, it would even be that much stronger. Uh, I like the image. I like the, I like the way the colors work in it. Um, and uh, the fact that there was a, a, a male figure in the picture doesn't bother me at all. I think it, I think it says flowers, certainly. And uh, that, was the, uh, that was the assignment. So that's, I call it as I saw it. I agree that it meets the assignment, especially after it was described by Jeanette, uh, saying that, uh, I can't remember what you said, is that that didn't have to be the, the only subject. I, I personally find that this, would, this photograph would, would be a bit better in a category of uh, field workers or people, people at work or something like that, more than the flowers. There are flowers, undoubtedly, and he's got flowers in his hand, and there's flowers in the background. But even even with all that, I still find that the subject is the man. Number one. Number two, um, once again, this photograph is slanted. Um, I, I find that it needs to, to be moved. It, you can see it on the on, on the top. The, 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 the horizontal line is slanted. The, the stems of all the, the, the flowers are slanted. So it needed a little bit of straightening, uh, minor, minor details. Some people are not bothered by those things. Um, the exposure is, is, is quite nice. I agree with Sandy that there's a little bit too much on the right and making it a little more eight by 10 type of uh, dimensions, it would have made a, a nice, a more impactful image and burning a little bit on the right as well to balance the, 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 the the flowers on the left are much have a much better density, better exposed. Valentine flower scores ninety five and eighty seven, average ninety one for Jim Farrington. Me? Okay. Yep. I I'm right now. I feel devastated to see that, that you scored it as low as you did because I find this to be the most beautiful image of the competition. I gave it the highest score that I gave, which was a 95. I didn't go any higher. I had a few two, three 93s and a few 92s, but this one to me was a superior image. I find the flower is is magnificent. I I mean, it's just, uh, it's an explosion of beauty. Everything, everything, the center, the light in the center, two, three items with less light, two with more light, the stem in the middle, the, the bottom, the stem on, I mean, the, the leaves on the top, I, I, I can't get over it. I mean, it's just, I find it absolutely magnificent. I'd like to hear why you scored it well, you didn't score it bad, but 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 it, it, you know you went went down on, on an image that I think is, is is so excellent. You know, that's that's why we have two judges. Yeah, well. um, people look at things differently sometimes. Um, it's a nice shot. I didn't score it badly. Uh, I, it just didn't hit me the same way that it hit you, especially compared to some of the other images. You know, we we tend to score a little bit on the curve when we're looking at these pictures, we have to look at, I look at them all first. I'm sure you do too. When we judge in person in the room, we go around the room and look at all the pictures first and kind of see what's there. Yeah. And compared to some of the other ones, I didn't feel it, it deserved as high a score as the other ones. It just didn't hit me the same way. I thought that the, uh, that the photographer possibly could have worked on this photo a little bit and lightened up the central area of that flower a little bit. I found it to be a little bit dark, a little bit, 
confused, I guess, uh, because the colors are so similar in there. It just didn't hit me the same way as it hit you. I understand what you're saying, but um, I, I, you know, I feel like Siskel and Ebert over here talking about a movie that we disagree about. Um, it just didn't hit me the same way. Compositionally, it's good. I can't take anything away from from it from that way, but I just have to have to call it as I see it. And that, that was the way I saw that one. I agree that the center. I like the set, the, the the orange section of the of the flower. I think is is perfect for me. The only thing I would have brightened a little bit is the white tip of the uh, and and maybe a little bit on the green stem that ends in the white uh, top of the of the center of the flower. Brightening that that white would give it a little bit more of a spark. That's the only thing I would do to this to this photograph. Well, let, let me make one other comment. You know, we're also working at a little different disadvantage because when we're in the room and we're judging the picture under the light, we're seeing we're sitting side by side, seeing the same image at the same time under the same lighting. Now we're each looking at it on our computers. I happen to have a, a 27 inch iMac here. I'm looking at it on people are looking at it on iPads and maybe somebody even on a phone. I know you're not looking at it that way, but the point is, uh, you know, the calibration may be a little different on each monitor, dark light, you know, the, the way the colors, the intensity of the color. So we're really not exactly looking at the same thing either. I agree. I, agree. I, I also have a 27 inch Mac, so we're probably pretty much the same. Um, what, I, what I find is, and I was thinking of this today because I was discussing the fact that we're, I'm gonna, I was going to be a judge in this, in this contest with pictures online. Oh, it's horrible. It's so much better to see the, the photograph. And I, I, I don't agree. I mean, I would tr if I try to print this photograph on my printer, I don't think I could get even close to the beauty of it on the screen. No matter what, maybe with glossy paper and make, making it 10 times until I get, but it, the beauty of the, the transparency, the translucency of, of a screen is hard to get on paper. So I think we're getting a better version of these photographs than, than, than printed. Well, let's face it, when we, were, when we judge in person and we see them projected, a lot of times the projection <laughs> Uh, the digital image looks better than the print. And of course, we can't judge it on based on prints. You know, we're supposed to judge the presentation as well to a certain extent. If a, poor, if a picture is poorly printed, for example, you know, we don't generally tend to bring it down. Here, we have no print. Basically, it's whatever the photographer did to manipulate and process the image on his computer. Hopefully, they had a, hopefully they had a calibrated monitor when they did it. And, you know, hopefully we're getting on your computer and my computer, and everybody else's were getting something similar, but you know, there's no way to know without putting everything side by side and looking. No. No Go ahead. Okay, first of all, um, if we could go a little faster. Okay. Because we've still got 10 pictures or 11 pictures to go and we, you have to pick the winners. Okay. So um, keep that in mind. You want to just have one of us judge, and we'll take turns on these, or talk about them around. Uh, that's a good idea. That'd be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you should do a little, just a little quicker, because it's not fair for the remaining members to have just one judge uh, comment okay. on these. Okay. okay. Okay, uh, Cotswold's Beauty scores 85 and 87 for an average of 86 for Roger Wyman. Who goes first? Do you go first on this for us? I forgot already. Uh, whatever. <laughs> it's a beautiful image. Um, what would I do better? The exposure on the flower, I would say, is uh, cannot improve. It's, it's just perfect. The exposure on the background, maybe a little bit too light on the left. Um, there's a distracting element on the left corner, which I would like to tone down or got rid of it. Um, but I can't say much more. I mean, uh, it, it scored, it's, we scored it almost the same. So I guess we had a similar idea. Okay, uh, in the interest of hiring things up, I, I agree uh, with Boris. I would definitely burn the background, especially on the left a little bit, just by kind of vignetting it a little bit, burning it, bringing it in a little bit, 
I think the flower would have it would have made it a more impactful image. It is impactful, but my eye tends to go to the lighter area, especially if they're out, you know, off to the side like that. We need to kind of adjust that a little bit, and I think it'd be that much stronger. Lone cypress tree scores 90 and 95 for an average of 92.5 for David Wicks. Um, I scored this very high, one of the higher ones, uh, you know, uh, of all the scores I made. I'm not saying it's the highest, but it's right up there near the top five, probably. And uh, yeah, could we improve it a little bit? Crop maybe just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit off the right, maybe. Um, other than that, I don't see a whole lot that could be done to improve the image. It's beautiful. Well, I scored it that way. I agree. I agree. It's, it's an absolutely beautiful image. Beautiful tones. The blue is magnificent. And the, the trees are somewhat prominent, especially the one on the right. So I, I gave it an excellent score, but not superior. Not for this theme, anyway. For a landscape, a seascape or something, I might have gone a 95 as well. Well, it was flowers and trees, I believe, right? Yeah, no, I agree. But it's too much to the photograph compared to others that are more to the theme. Or, uh, that's okay. okay. Blanca C. Lily. Scores 87 and 94, average 90.5 for Dustin Kiel Athanasiadis. Who goes first? Do I go first? Um, don't I, think you, I think you I, go. Okay. I, I, I didn't like this composition. I, I see that you scored it quite high, and I scored it as a, as a good. You scored it as, a, uh, as an excellent. Um, there's distracting elements. I I don't like the leaf on the left. I don't like the white hot spot on the right. Um, I don't particularly care for the focus. A little bit too soft on the rear petals. Um, I don't. Well, it, didn't, it just didn't work for me. The the bottom right petal is also very hot. There were too many things that I found that just didn't quite make it to an excellent photograph. Well, um, I understand what you're saying, but those things didn't bother me probably as much as they bothered you. I certainly probably would have burned in a little bit in the upper right-hand corner, that, that light, lighter green area maybe. But um, bottom left doesn't bother me at all. I think compositionally it does work. Uh, yeah, it's not sharp everywhere, but it's sharp in some places. And um, I don't know, the, the image hit me and I, I scored it the way I felt it should be scored. Vermont Aspens scores 84 and 87, average 85.5 for John McNutt. This photo was really saved by those uh, purple, lilac, whatever you want to call them, flowers over there. Uh, obviously, were they not there, I don't think this would have scored. I would not, not score this anywhere nearly as high. But I found it very interesting for that reason, and the photographer obviously, obviously shot it with that in mind too. Um, I, I gave it what I give. I gave it a fairly good score because of that. Uh, I would have done a little bit of burning around, you know. I would have a little, little vignetting on this. It would have made it a stronger image. Bring your eye in there a little bit more. I would have, you know, burned the upper right a little bit, burned the upper left a little bit, maybe even across the top just a little bit, bottom, bottom corners a little bit, just a little bit, not enough to be super obvious or anything. I think that would have helped the image a bit, but I like I like the shot and I, I scored it accordingly. I like the idea of, of making a panoramic. It, uh, it, it added dimensions to, to the photograph, although I'm not, I personally not too crazy about the flowers. I would have preferred to see a, a, a section of the forest that had the trees a little closer together and, and have all these vertical white trees uh, lining up on a uh, panoramic 
uh, view the same way he has it. And and like you, know, you said, a little burning maybe the leaves are a little light and the stem the, the trees are also a little bit hot, but a nice image. Blossoming. Uh, scores 85 and 95, average of 90 for Barbara Thompson. Go ahead, Sam. I think it's your turn to go, but I'll be happy to go first. Go ahead. Yeah, you scored it much higher. Um, you, scored it high. you scored it higher, right? No, you, you, I think you scored 95, I scored 85, so it's... Okay, well, that's a point, that point difference. Uh, the, the image grab, grabbed me, you know. Um, yeah, it's got a person in the picture. It's not only flowers, but flowers are certainly a very important element of this photo. And uh, it's well exposed. I think the focus is really good. Um, I think the cropping is excellent. Uh, the color is really good. And uh, it's a little different than the other ones that we've seen, that's for sure. But... I guess for that reason, it appealed to me, and that's why I scored as I did. Okay, I won't make any more comments. <laughs> okay, social distancing. Scores 90 and 96, average 93 for Ivan Frazen. Uh, hey, I, this is a wonderful image, like Bob's trees, like uh, it was another image that, that had this kind of beauty. There's a few images that have this kind of beauty. Uh, what would I do better? The only thing that I didn't like on this photograph is that the top left of the tree and, and, and that whole section of the sky is a little dark and it sort of unbalances the the right corner has also a little bit of darkness, but the left corner has got too much darkness. I find that it comes in, the darkness comes in too much, almost to, to half of the photograph or, or a third, a little more than a third. <coughs> That's the only thing that I didn't like. Other than that, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful image. I mean, it's like an enchanted view of the um, sky. Those um, those uh, comments are. I understand why you made them, Boris, but they don't particularly bother me uh, the same way that they bothered you. I love this picture. Um, I think it just really works. It's also obviously uh, a time exposure. I'm assuming it's one one picture, not multiple pictures put together. And uh, you know, uh, compositionally, I think it's good. Uh, I just find it a very interesting image, and, and that's why I scored it as I did. Leafless. Scores 82 and 82, average 82 for Fred Kong. Yeah, this, this one, uh, uh, we had, we had a couple of others that uh, you know we had the same I uh, have the same comments about it didn't really didn't really uh, have a point of focus for me uh, maybe if the photographer was able to back up a little bit I don't know what was around this image uh, and have a little more sky it might have made a better point or maybe it even show some other trees with leaves and show this one without leaves you know a little more clearly I see there are some trees around there that have leaves. And maybe it would have been a little more uh, impactful that way, but it just didn't hit the yeah, the, and the sky needs some work. It just uh, it, it didn't it, didn't, it just didn't hit me. There was no there's no real place for your eye to go in this picture, in my opinion. Maybe there's a there's a picture within this picture. You know, get rid of I would get rid of the red flowers. I would get rid of the green bush. I would maybe straighten it a little bit and I would crop it to the center and and just just uh, use all the all the little branches all these lines as as as, as make it a photograph 
crop, crop right the center, using the center of the photograph. Because the way it is, it, it's, it's an interest. It's too many subjects, too many things, nothing to, to concentrate on. Cottonwood Tree, Capitol Reef Park, scores 88 and 86 for an average of 87 for Daniel Holmes. Go ahead. Um, as I look at it today, I like the image better than, than yesterday for some reason. I, it's creating a lot of impact in me right now. The, the shape of the tree is, is wonderful. The inclusion of the red mountain on the bottom is, is, is nice, it's complimentary. It fills that empty space there that, that where there's no branch practically. Um, it's a wonderful image. I, I think it probably deserved a little higher score. It's, a, it's very, very, very nice. Texture wise also. I think uh, it, it I think I pulled it down because I felt like the um, coloration and uh, it needed a little more punch to it. I don't think it needs more contrast, but I think if the photographer had uh, possibly increased the saturation, especially in the blue sky, I think it would have popped a little more because compositionally it's pretty good. I think it's very good, but it just didn't impact me uh, the way I would like it to in order to give it a higher score. So that's the reason I scored it as I did. Mountain Meadow scores 89 and 93, average of 91 for James Keith. This is, um, I like this, obviously I scored it higher than uh, and Morris did, but I really like this picture. I, I don't find a lot of fault with it. I, yeah, you know, you can look after the fact that I might have worked on the sky a little bit, maybe. But you know, uh, compositionally, it, it's good. It, it follows the basic rules of composition very well, and uh, it does. Yeah, mountains are a part of the picture, I suppose. Maybe Morris pulled it down for that. We'll have to ask him about it. But um, I, I think it, wor it worked for me, and I scored it accordingly. I, I, I agree with you, composition-wise, it's almost perfect, but I still find, I don't know how I would remedy this, but I would like to see a little more on the, of the mountain, in, of, of the, the section of the mountain. In other words, that one third of the photograph, I'd like to see it a little wider, but then I don't think I can crop on the bottom because the, there is nowhere to crop, so it's, it's, I'm in a bind. But I, I do find the, the, the section of the flowers and the field a little bit too, too much for the photograph in general. Not for the flowers, but for the photograph in general, the composition. I think it, it's too much of the flowers and the field and not enough of the, the mountain and the, or the sky in this case, because the mountains are complete. But I needed a little more sky, a little more space on the top. Maybe even making it a square. You can probably build some sky on the top and make it a square, a full square image, which is almost is right now. And, and I think it would be a nicer image in general. Splash of Purple scores 88 and 97, average 92.5 for Ina Malastoka. Okay, my turn? Yeah, I think so. Okay, um, things, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful photograph. Background, background, it takes the winning, the winner. I mean, the background is a winner. That bottom section, yeah, I guess because of, it was a time exposure, it created the, the, the movement of the waves, created those unbelievably beautiful figures. I love it. The flower, I think, 
I find it a little hot on the top. It needed a little burning. And, um, and definitely the three green leaves are too hot, too bright, too distracting. Um, I would like to say I'd like to crop it closer, and that's probably what Sandy's going to say, but then it would get rid of that beautiful background, which is the photograph. White dots, a million. A million. I would have worked five minutes on getting rid of some of them. They're probably there. But to me, some of them look like like problems of the of the camera or something. Um, sometimes you get white dots where there shouldn't be white dots, and this is maybe one of the, these cases. Um, I couldn't really score it higher because of all the things I said. Well, I have a feeling our monitors look different because those green, those three green leaf, uh, lilies that are floating there. Do, do not look too hot to me, and the, and the flower does not look too hot to me. So either my monitor's off or your monitor's off, or maybe we're both off a little bit. I don't know. Um, to me, it looks great. I scored it one of the highest scores of all of them. I mean, this type of subject is fairly common. You see these frequently enough, but this one is very well executed. The reflection uh, holds very well. Uh, compositionally it works yeah you can crop a little on the right I'm looking at it when you mentioned it but um, I don't know if I really would do that so I gave it a pretty good score and uh, and I like the image what can I say winter in big Cyprus scores 88 and 95 Average 91.5 for Brian Huntsman. Well, this is another one of my favorites. Um, I guess it was, it was infrared or what? I'm trying to determine how, if that's really the way it looks or not. I don't know. Um, is the photographer online with us here? Could he tell me if, or she t he tell me if that's, was this shot with any kind of a, is it an infrared picture or is it just a regular picture and that's the way it looked? I'm curious. <laughs> Infrared. Okay, that's what I, that's what I thought. And, uh, but it's beautifully executed, and uh, I want to compliment you on that. Um, it's also my first infrared ever taken. <laughs> okay. Well, I, just got, I just got my camera converted. Well, it really does look nice. I think compositionally, I think it's excellent. I wouldn't change a thing with the composition. Um, Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. I, I liked it, and uh, I scored it. You know, I scored it fairly high again because of the way it hit me, and I would not make any changes in this in this image. Um, I don't think I have anything to add. Hanging flowers. Scores 90 and 87, average 88.5 for Robert Carafel. I mean, it's a hanging flower. It's a hanging flower. The composition is, is beautiful. That leaf, the leaves in the back frame it very nicely. The background is very nice. The focus is wonderful. The, 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 uh, the exposure is wonderful. Uh, you know, a, a hanging flower somehow is a little different from. It's another perspective, uh, like the like the the sunflower that, that was photographed from behind. Um, so, you know, I gave it an excellent score. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful shot. I, I admit that. It just you know. For the way it hit me, it didn't hit me quite as strong as some of the others, and that's why I didn't score it as high as some of the others. I didn't give it a bad score, um, but um, you know, I scored it. Uh, what I scored at the top of uh, top of the good range. Uh, it just, um, you know, we've been criticized in the past a few times by scoring things too high, so I've tried to be a little more critical this time. Uh, and it's just the way about the way that the shot hit me, and that's why I scored it as I did. I have no. No suggestions really to make as to what to do to improve it, to tell you the truth. Oh, 
Okay, uh, we are at the end of the slideshow. Walter, you want to take over and explain what's going to happen now? Yeah, well, we're going to go into an intermission. The judges are going to uh, get together in a separate room to discuss the winners of both uh, groups, A and B, and should be back in about, I guess, uh, about 10 minutes maybe. So everybody now is free to take a break, have a coffee, go to the restroom, and we should be, be back momentarily. to the spreadsheet so we can announce them. Okay, so for group B. So are you guys the only ones on the break out room? Yes. Okay, good. So let me, so, I don't know what I did, but I did it. For group B, <laughs> these are the, the top six images. Yeah, go ahead, please. And Dustin is going to share his screen, so when I announce, I can bring up the winners. Such talent. Okay, so number three, third place in Group B is Winter in Big Cyprus by Brian Huntsman. who I would like to welcome to the group. It's the first time he's like participated. Winter. It definitely looks like winter there. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, and uh, second place in uh, group B is Swampy Reflections by Samuel Shapiro. Mm -hmm. Yay, Sam. Sam, you want to make a comment? Oh, I forgot, Brian, if, if you want to make a comment about his picture. Uh, okay. Oh, I, I took uh, this uh, loop road. I don't know if everyone knows where it is. Three months ago, and the reflections looked interesting over the rocks. And there you are. Uh, Dustin, you could go back to the other picture, maybe. What happened? Okay, we're back. Is he still here? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, can you can go on now? Oh, okay, uh, so I took this also off a big loop uh, about oh, maybe four weeks ago, and I just recently converted my old Nikon D300 to infrared through light pixel. Uh, the I got the hypercolor conversion, and this is basically right out of the camera. So this was early what, in the morning. What is the hyper uh, conversion? What does it mean exactly? Uh, you, when you convert, do infrared conversion, you can get it for different wavelengths or different styles of infrared, and they mm -hmm. have a fairly new one right now that's called hypercolor. And with hypercolor, it gives you more latitude in post as to the effect you can ultimately get. Hmm. Cool. Definitely an unusual you. effect. It's very nice. Okay. And okay. Samuel, uh, Swampy Reflections, you want to comment on that? Oh, okay. It was... Uh, place uh, on the loop uh, road again and it was amazing uh, picture of the rocks with all these uh, uh, all, all these uh, reflections, reflections etc and it, it was really a, a beautiful thing well the judges liked okay. it yep 
they did. And they wanted to mention that they had, in both groups, they had a very hard time picking for second and third. So uh, first place in uh, Group B is Alone in the Keys by David Wicks. So if David wants to comment, if he's there. I guess not. Looks like it's low tide. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think David uh, left. Okay, and in Group A, uh, third place goes to New Mexico, Pecan Trees in Fog by Robert Carafel. I shot this on my way to Carl's, Carlsbad Caverns when I was traveling south that day and there was a heavy fog early in the morning and I, I looked around and saw this uh, obviously these planted trees since they're all in perfect rows. Turns out after I got back, I found out there were pecan trees. Hmm. I saw this uh, right off the edge of the property from just from the edge of the road practically over the top of a barbed wire, wire fence. Hmm. Okay, and Second place in Group A is Bending to the Sun by Ben Shapiro. Beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, that you was read? stunning. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, someone, a friend of mine, uh, had to take me to this uh, sunflower little farm in, uh, I guess, the Redlands. And I was trying to get pictures of sunflowers, you know, wide angle, close, and I don't know, I, I just wasn't happy. And you had to be careful where you walk because uh, first of all, there were big dogs all the way at the end. <laughs> and also you have to watch out for some snakes if they're there and uh, wells. So I just changed my position a little and I thought, oh wow, that really, is very interesting looking at the back of a flower and sunflowers turn towards the sun. They move. So uh, I took this uh, shot and actually it was very pretty in color. And I said, let me just see because of the way the colors spell, what it would look like in uh, black and white. And I really didn't have to do very much with it. Just uh, take out a little bit of the uh, white and uh, a little bit of uh, contrast and sharpen a little bit of it and that was it. Uh, I don't even think I cropped it. Wow. It's beautiful, Yvette. Oh, thank you. Yes, it is. And you could see every little hair on the stems. It's so sharp. Mm -hmm. Okay, and number one, first place in group A is Rustic Rest Stop by I Ivan Tyson. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, let me guess, that looks like Switzerland to me. It is. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> Yeah, this was about an hour away from where I used to live. I used to take the tram out with my dog and uh, walk along the paths in the forest. And uh, the one day I happened to have my camera along with me. So perfect opportunity. Did you I like the dapple the light coming in. What was that? Did you burn, did you burn in the corners? Uh, I burned in the left bottom corner. Yeah, it looks like that's burned in. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have been probably too bright down there. It was. There was actually uh, an open canopy right there, and there was a flood of light 
coming in there and it didn't add anything to the mood. So it took your eye away from everything. Beautiful. Thanks.